pass and then chase him down. So hopefully a big axis buck down in southwest Texas. We'll see. Stay tuned. Welcome to Texas. We've been with Texas Trophy Whitetails before my good friend Keith Miller. It's always one of my favorite trips and this one, it was a great hunt. 20 hour drive, we get down there the next morning we're in a stand, he says he's got a good spot. It's getting light, I actually hear antlers hitting the feeder. It gets light and there's this great axis buck in front of me. Does a little rutting behavior, lip curls, does everything. comes in, gives me the perfect shot. Didn't see him fall over or anything, called Keith up and literally came out there and got him. Next thing you know, we got a great access deer and we've been in Texas less than an hour. I can't believe it's all over. I'd probably say 15 minutes and this guy already came in and he was with a whole herd. What a great hunt. Thank you, Texas Trophy Whitetails. Keith Miller, you are the man. Proof is in pudding. And that's the show. Thanks for watching. Just kidding! This Texas trip is just getting started. This year what's a little bit different was we took my good friend Jordan Eagley from Burris Optics and Jordan had never hunted Axis deer. Jordan couldn't get in there for the first morning. I already tagged out. He rolls into camp. He wants to shoot, you know, the, the rifle. We have to put a new Burris on it. He's gonna scope, sight it in the gun. That made the dirt fly. about an inch, inch and a half low. Work for you? Works yeah, for me. that'll do it. The official way to move a Maverick blind is just to get inside, put your hands up, and just start walking. Put him in a spot. Keith said, hey, I got a spot right next to camp where there's a really good buck coming. So we grabbed the Maverick. We set it out there, got it all placed. It looked perfect. So all we have to do now is wait to see if the Axis deer are gonna come. Modern Hunter is brought to you by When hunting axis deer in Texas, whether or not you use a bow or a gun is often determined by how much water the area receives in the spring, or how bad of a winter Texas may have had that year. So if there is a lot of spring green up, or the deer were hit particularly hard during the winter, then gun hunting is the way to go. Not to mention, axis deer are notorious for their intense awareness and caution. So bow hunting can be an exciting challenge to take on. Frozen water pipes bursting, destroying homes, some causing ceilings to collapse. In the winter of 2020, Texas was hit with a record-breaking freeze, and the axis herd suffered in numbers, as well as many of the bucks who had their antlers freeze and break off before the annual rut.
the last day I had to go back to the old Browning rifle, but we got it done, a beautiful, beautiful access. Texas Trophy Whitetails has them, guys. I'm telling you, we saw so many access tonight. I saw three, six, nine, 12, 14 access, but they had this huge freeze back in March. And a lot of the antlers are either broke or you'll see it just a huge body buck. I, I got video of one right before this, just massive body and he had just little horns. So next year is gonna be the year if you're looking for a trophy, but man, I couldn't be more happy for the last day buck full velvet. This velvet is just absolutely gorgeous. First animal I've ever shot in velvet. This year, the herd was able to bounce back. The area received little amounts of water in the spring and Keith had the perfect buck coming to a feeder right behind camp. So now it was up to Jordan to take a deep breath and squeeze the trigger. So Jordan heads out to the stand and Axis deer start piling out and the big buck shows up right away. Of course, you know what a big deer do? They're always hiding behind somebody else or always at that bad shot angle, right? So there you sit. You're with this giant axis buck in front of you, and you can't pull the trigger. He's the king of the... All right, here we go. Take it, whatever you want. All right. No, don't go back. Son of a gun. We are literally half a step right there. Half a step. Did I hit him? I don't think so. He's still, he's, he looks confused. He's standing. We'll shoot. Did I hit him? I think you got him. I think you got him that second time. That second shot wasn't a good shot, though. Is he down? He's... Crap, where did he go? Don't go away. Coming up next, Brad has an exciting new laundry detergent to share that's designed to help you turn the wind into an advantage while hunting. Then, the fate of Jordan's Axis buck is revealed. It happens to us all, right? I mean, I'm not blaming him, it happens to us all. Did I hit him? You're watching Modern Hunter. So I'm a hunter and I want clean clothes, right? Because that's one of the one of the areas that scent always comes from is your clothes. How often does a person need to wash their clothes? And it's literally on the, how much you use it, but not even how much you use it, it's how far you gotta walk. I mean, there's a lot of things that come into effect. Normally we'd walk to our stand, it's, it's almost a mile. And I carry everything, like if this is what I was gonna wear out to the tree stand, I'm gonna have the vest, I'm gonna have my coat on my backpack. I'm not gonna be wearing it, I'm gonna go in as light as physically possible because I don't wanna get all sweated up. And therefore when I do put that stuff on when I'm in the tree stand, I know that it's totally scent free on the outer layer, right? But I like to wash my clothes at least once a week. I just don't wanna let that whitetail know that a person or a dog or anything has been in that area. I want them to feel as comfortable as possible. Because when you're hunting mature deer, you know, basically you need a few things. You need food, water, cover, and security. And by security, I mean they wanna feel safe. So if I'm in their bedroom, if I'm covered in that security area, I wanna be sent free. I don't wanna let them know that I'm there. That's why I love Synthes laundry detergent. It's safe for your washer. It's gonna give you the same technology, essential oils. You're gonna smell, again, your clothes are gonna evaporate that scent, letting it constantly get out there. So tricking that whitetail's nose and believing that nobody's in there. And, and what I like about it is it doesn't cause your clothes to fade. Because a lot of these detergents are pretty harsh, right? And you can wear your camouflage and next thing you know, it doesn't look real camouflage anymore. It's all washed out. They're so harsh, it's taking that dye right out of that, that fabric. And therefore, they're not going to be effective. 
I mean, we pay enough for this stuff right now, right? So I want mine to last as long as possible. That's why I use a product like Scent Thief's Laundry Detergent. It's a great product at an affordable price. Did I hit him? I don't think so. He's still, he's, he looks confused. He's standing. Well, shoot. Did I hit him? I think you got him. I think you got him that second time. That second shot wasn't a good shot, though. Is he down? He's... Crap, where did he go? After about a 45-minute standoff with an absolute beautiful deer, I finally got a shot. Uh, couldn't tell if I hit him on the first shot. Uh, he took off running. Definitely hit him on the second shot. Um, he still kept running a little bit right off into the tree line. We think he's right there. We think he's dead. We're gonna give him a little time and uh, go see what happened. So hopefully big axis deer buck down in Southwest Texas. This is a first for me. Stay tuned. Modern Hunter is brought to you by This segment of Modern Hunter is brought to you by Mystery Ranch. Built for the mission. Did I hit him? I don't think so. He's still, he looks confused. He's standing. Oh, shoot. Did I hit him? I think you got him. So you're just sitting there waiting and waiting. It seemed like forever for him. And as that excitement builds, he finally gets a shot, probably rushed it a little bit, shoots. complete whiff. It happens to us all, right? I mean, I'm not blaming him. It happens to us all. And that deer takes off on a, on a run and he shoots it again and he hits it a little bit further back. So what do you got to do? You got to back out. He's still extremely excited. It's going to be a dead axis deer. Unfortunately, you're not going to do that immediately recover that you'd like to with a rifle. Here we go. What a beautiful animal. That's a stud. Yeah, well, I think we made the I think we made the right call backing out, get a, giving him some time. Right. So that first shot ended up being a, a clean miss. I uh, I think I just got nervous. I haven't seen a, a trophy animal like this through a scope in a long, long time and Pulled the shot, was able to make a, a pretty quick follow-up shot when he was on the run. Um, and it wasn't the best shot, but it was a lethal shot and uh, gave him some time and, and came out and got him. So appreciate the experience. This is a first for me. Red relief. Southwest Texas Axis Deer. If you guys aren't looking at a hunt for one of these, you need to change what you're looking at. This was a, a great trip. Yep, one, two, three. This guy's gonna. The beauty of camp, like when you're in there, especially when you're with somebody that's never hunted that species, it is so cool to see them be successful, right? So you're always hoping that you're the one that shoots the biggest one. Jordan shot the biggest deer in camp last year, and I'm happy he did. Not taking anything away from the other bucks, but it was a great deer, and he's a great person.